Alright, I'm going to show you guys how I make lactic acid bacteria. You can use this in your farm. This is a natural farming input um, that just takes rice wash water. So uh, it's, it's not too complicated. So let's get into it. To get started with lactic acid bacteria, I got my rice. I'm going to add my water in there. And we're just going to simply rinse that out. And we're going to use that rice wash water to ferment for a couple days. So let's go ahead and get our rice wash collection. So make sure you have clean hands as you're doing this. So we're gonna rinse the rice in the water. All right, so now that we got that, we're gonna use this rice wash water and we're gonna let it ferment. We got our mason jar. I like to use this funnel and a screen just so you know rice is going through here. You don't need to be extra with that, but you know me. I like to be a little extra. I'm gonna pour this rice wash water in here. As much as you can. We have our rice wash water. We're gonna date and label it, right? I put my date, I put rice wash water on here. So I know what it is. And uh, what we're gonna notice in a couple days is a sweet change in smell, okay? You don't want this to go sour, and you're, you're gonna know when it goes sour. But we're, notice, we're trying to look for a sweet change in the smell. And I would say the moment you notice that sweet change, go ahead and go to the second part where we're gonna put this one part to 10 parts of milk, okay? So we're gonna let this sit for about Usually about two days. It takes about two days for me, and um, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna smell it. I'm gonna look for that sweet change, and the moment I notice that transition in smell, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my one part to ten parts of milk. So we'll let this ferment, and I'll see you guys in the next step. Okay? Smell it. <laughs> So we have our rice wash water. It's been sitting for about, it's been about two to three days now. Um, I wanna say it's definitely been less than 72 hours. And remember what we're looking for in our rice wash water is just a sweet, sweet smell, a sweet change in smell. And um, it's not sour, which is great. And if you smell it and it does smell sour, toss it out, redo it. Um, I wouldn't risk any of it, but yeah, this is my rice wash water, it's been sitting. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add one part of rice wash water to 10 parts of milk. Now my milk, I'm using whole milk. That's what I found um, to be best when I'm making lactic acid bacteria. Um, but I have seen natural farmers use anything from organic milk to coconut milk. It's all possible. So give it a try, but I'm gonna use whole milk in this specific video. So let me show you guys what that looks like. This is whole milk that I'm gonna be using. This is a clear container I like to use for my lactic acid bacteria. Let's go ahead, fill it up with milk. Show you guys how easy it is to make lactic acid bacteria. You want to use my specific measurements that's absolutely fine we got our rice wash water I'm just gonna go ahead put that all in yep. all right we got a breathable lid on it now we're just gonna let this sit and uh, what we'll notice is a separation from the curds and the whey. And um, yeah, this is the next step in making lactic acid bacteria. So we'll just let this ferment uh, for a couple days now. All right, so this is what our lab looks like. It's been about roughly 48 hours, about two days. And you can see the separation from the curds and our whey serum that we want to extract. And uh, this is ready to go. I'm gonna show you guys how I extract lactic acid bacteria and um, a great beneficial microorganism to add into our farm as a natural farming input. 
and um, let's go ahead and get into this and I don't know if you guys can see that in there but um yeah Here, let's do one of these look at that lactic acid bacteria and it's uh, ready to go let's extract this so this is a funnel I'm going to use to extract. Make sure you have a container that you want to pour the liquid in. I also have a five gallon paint strainer and what we're going to do with this is just kind of put this over the funnel and this will make extraction a lot easier. Alright so got that on there. Now before you just pour all this in there what we're going to do is kind of separate the curds out because we don't want a lot of um, debris in to our lactic acid bacteria here. Um, so just be careful as you cut into it. I'm gonna be using a spatula and a spoon to scoop it out and uh, let's dig into it. All right, so we're just gonna carefully kind of cut down the center. Check that out. It's not as big as the silver one, but um, we'll just go ahead and fill these bottles up. All right, so there's two ways you can store lactic acid bacteria. The first way is, um, is you can just put it right into a bottle with a breathable lid and you can store it in the fridge. Or if you want to keep it at room temperature, you can put equal parts of brown sugar into your lactic acid bacteria. So I'm, I like throwing mine in the fridge, so just kind of... Pour a little bit in there. And there you guys have it, how to make lactic acid bacteria. Pretty simple, just using rice wash water, letting it ferment and adding that to 10 parts of 
I used whole milk. You can use um, whatever you want. I've seen um, a lot of natural farmers use different types of milk and uh, they've been successful in making lactic acid bacteria. One of the benefits of having lab here on my farm is that this is a great way for my plants to start absorbing nutrients while helping them become disease resistant. Think of lab as the cleanup crew or the balancer here on my farm. Now if you saw in my previous video in the Daily Girl 5, you saw that I used a type 3 solution. So this is two days after I used my type 3 solution and now I'm going to get ready to use some lab. I'm personally going to be using lab at a dilution rate of 1 to 1000. So in one gallon of water, I'm going to be using 4 milliliters of lactic acid bacteria. Let me show you guys how I use lab on my specific farm. In this one gallon of water, I'm going to be using 4 milliliters of lab. Now I'm going to put that into my spray bottle and we're going to do a foliar spray on everything that's out here on the farm. Now remember with any natural farming input you kind of want to wait until the sun is going down so that way this kind of gives the plants a little bit of time to absorb the nutrients and it's not in the heat of the day um, where they're going to be dying off here. I got my lab, I got my little dropper, let's do 4 milliliters here. So this is a four milliliter dropper. We'll just go ahead, put that in the water. And let's go ahead and spray our plants down. So as I'm doing a foliar spray, I like to coat all the leaves on my tomato plants. And we're gonna go into the cucumbers, we'll go into the zucchinis, we'll go into the squashes. Like I said, everything's gonna get some good old lab. And yes, even my cabbages are being sprayed with lab. Um, and let me show you them real quick because I do have some heads forming on them. And if you saw in my previous video in the Daily Girl 5, you knew that some of these cabbages got attacked with some cabbage worms. Now this is my second time applying lab as a foliar spray. Um, and this was probably a week after I started consistently doing Chatham wetting agent and just hand picking off those worms myself. So I don't know if uh, something's working in it, but um, my cabbages have no sign of any cabbage worms at the moment. Um, but I'm just keeping a close eye on them. So this is how I specifically use lab as of right now. I know there are people who like to use this as a soil drench. I have not gotten to that point yet. Right now I'm just doing a foliar spray. If anybody out there wants to help me out and let me know how they're applying lab on their specific farm, I would love to talk to you. Because like I said, this is just me trying to understand natural farming and how I can make it work here on my specific farm. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I want to make more application videos where I kind of show you how I'm using these natural farming inputs and hopefully it'll help you out because this is still something very new to myself and this is still something that I'm um, learning as I keep growing. So if you like these kind of videos, please subscribe to my channel. This is John KNF, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Bye.